Oh, what's up, Buck? Doug with Dini in the garage. It's been several videos since we've actually wrenched on anything. I feel bad about that. This is a uh, wrench turning channel. We are not all talk. We occasionally do as well. So let me let me paint a picture for you. We're gonna fix something today. Let me explain my issue. We're here in my 2000 Cherokee. I'm driving down the road the other day, and I hear a clunk. Right, just a one sound like a hammer tapping a frame, and. Uh, I immediately pulled over and looked around and nothing wasn't driving weird. After a few minutes of investigation, I found that, and I know it's hard to see in here, this uh, lever right here, my four-wheel drive lever, it wasn't attached to anything anymore. It, it, this could just come all the way up, go down, nothing, no resistance at all. So I come under the Jeep, lo and behold, what do you think I find? Turns out my linkage for my four-wheel drive to my transfer case is hanging down right here on the... Uh, uh, transmission cross member there. What had happened was the grommet that holds the arm for the lever to the arm for the uh, actual shifter selector had dry rotted. All right, it's not an uncommon issue. It happens a lot on kind of all Jeeps. I've had it happen on WJs. This is the first XJ I've done. You can see right there. I'll try to get y'all a better view. You see right here. This is the arm that goes to the transfer case. This is the linkage that goes up to the selector lever. Uh, and right here, there'd be a grommet that's holding this arm to all this. Dry rotted out, fell out, and uh, I had to wire this arm to this arm so that I could use my four wheel drive in the meantime. Today we're gonna fix that. Here's the replacement part right here. It's an Omix Atta part I got from Quadratech. Um, simple man, it's just this little guy right here. This slides onto the arm and then goes through the hole uh, on the other arm and now you are connected. Uh, you can see what happens is these are uh, some kind of rubber plastic depending on the year of your Jeep and they just dry rot, especially in the north with the salt and all that. The problem is I've done a couple of these. I don't know what the right way to put these things on is and you're going to see it's a bit of a struggle. I've always had to shave them down a little to get them to fit so I tried looking online for a good how-to video and they don't exist and what that tells me is nobody else knows how to put them on either. Nobody felt comfortable doing a video uh, and that's why I'm here. I certainly don't mind uh, going out on a limb and uh, possibly embarrassing myself. So uh, let's get back under the Jeep. We're going to cut that wire off. I'm going to try to find a good place for the, for the camera so that you all can watch what I'm doing. Um, but it's tight quarters under there and there's no damn light, so bear with me. Alrighty, to the best of my knowledge, I've got you fine folks someplace where you're going to be able to see what's going on. You're not going to be in my way. And I think the light's in a good spot, so let's see what we can do. First things first. Actually, I lied. You guys are already in my way. Sometimes I think it would be so awesome to be like a beauty blogger or something. It's a pain trying to work on a Jeep and also trying to figure out where to put the camera. It really is. I can't tell you how many five minute jobs have been made into an hour. Not because the job was difficult, but because filming underneath a freaking Jeep. Pain in the, you know what? All right, so let's get this bailing wire off of here so that y'all can see what we're doing, what we are doing. I gotta finish this job quick. It's the playoffs today. I know, you know, it's, it's the weirdest thing. I know most guys who are into Jeeps or cars are not also into football. So I find it hard. I'd love to do some segments, some NFL segments on this channel, but I know no one would listen to them. But I am a diehard NFL fan. I'm a lifelong Chicago Bears fan. Not because I'm from Chicago. In fact, I've only ever been there once and it was on business. But my family is, so that's how my uncle's my mother and all them raised us we're Chicago Bears fans anyway Chicago's playing Philly today and uh, I want to be done and ready for that sorry the wire's hitting the camera so if you're hearing some weird noises come on now. there we go all right so we got the wire off of there so now you guys can hopefully see the issue this just kind of came right out and it just fell down and that's the ding I heard right there and uh, that's how I knew something was wrong and then once that's like that. This linkage just moves free. It's not really connected to anything. Now in theory, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's recessed in right here. This slides into here, right? And then this just sort of pops right back into there. The problem is this is hard plastic. 
and this is rusty crusty old metal so it's not going to work that that nice and pretty uh, i think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a wire brush and we're going to try to clean this up um yeah try to clean that up i've never gotten one of these in without kind of sanding down the outer edge of this lip here to help force it in and it's still it's never pretty but that's not really the right way to do it there's got to be a right way to do it you know alrighty friends I gathered up a few implements of destruction let's see what we can do nope that's not the right one that's the transmission language where the hell am I here we go let's see if we can't clean this guy up a little bit and then maybe slide that thing in there alright maybe this guy a little bit that stuff's pretty much clean by the way if you guys don't have one uh, small little uh, wire brushes like this are absolutely awesome for stuff like this this isn't even the smallest one I have you go over to the welding aisle uh, these are little welding brushes and they make ones that are even smaller like the size of a toothbrush these things are amazing here's the plan this is my thought this is like the first attempt at just doing it easy I'm gonna put some grease in here I'll put some grease on here and I'm gonna use maybe a channel lock to try to pop it in there all right, so let's see what that looks like. Now, my, my obvious concern is that if you just go ahead and change the shape and size of this, at some point it's just gonna fall out and then you're in the same position. That's why every time I've done this in the past, I've resorted to just cutting it. I really don't wanna do that this time. So the whole point of this video is to find a way to do this. I mean, they wouldn't sell it in this size if you had to cut it down, but nobody gives a satisfactory explanation. I'm wondering if maybe they take the linkage all the way out and then like press it in. I mean, obviously not on like a press press, but I, I don't freaking know, man. I also don't know if it's better to put it on this side and then this side or vice versa. I think it'd be easier to get it in here and then find some way to get this little roddy on there. Let's, uh, let's try fingers first. <laughs> We have this viewer, Frank, who comments on every video, and he makes some innuendo out of everything we say. Frank, I want you to know that as I record videos now, I think about what you're going to say about it, and it gives me anxiety. <laughs> oh, but thank you for being such a loyal supporter. I appreciate it, man. You're a funny dude. All right, this is not working. Let's, let's get uh, something. This would be easier if this drive shaft wasn't in the way, but I'm not really in the mood to take a drive shaft out right now. So honestly, it would make it a lot easier. Hmm. If this goes south, we may be taking a drive shaft out. Ugh. Yes. Oh my goodness, finally. I hope y'all can see that. Okay. All right, we have the grommet inside the... Uh, inside the arm for the lever now we're going to try to pop this guy into there probably the same way with the vice grips all right let's see and there we go okay all right i had to get out from underneath that jeep so let's do the recap uh up here um I was able to get that in without cutting it. It was a nightmare. I know this video is probably only going to be like eight minutes long or something. I think I was probably under there for 45 minutes. So how did we do it? Okay, let's draw a diagram. So off the linkage side, there's a piece that looks like this, with the hole in the middle. And then you got your bar that goes to the actual transfer case. And that has a, uh, it looks almost like a grease nipple type fitting on it, all right? Oh wow, look, I'm an artist, aren't I? Okay, and then you've got your, um, uh, we're gonna call it a bushing, which looks like this. This is exaggerated. Yeah, whatever. Um, you're gonna grease this whole thing, right here, put grease all over that thing, and find some way to get this tapered end into here. The thing that I used, these vice grips right here. All right, I know it's not something everybody has. I think these were $5 at Harbor Freight. These are Pittsburgh. I'm sure there are other ways to do it today. This is how I did it. Uh, another thing, maybe take your drive shaft out. I think that would have made things a lot easier and I could have got different tools in there. Uh, but the long and the short of it is, 
I was able to press this tapered end of the uh, bushing into this side. It'll be obvious which side this goes into because one side is bowled out and the other side's not. Once you have that in, that's the hard part. That's what took me 44 minutes and it took me one minute to grease up this nipple looking thing and it presses into this side here. And again, I used the vice grips. So that's all there is to it. In reality, I had this weird rattle when I was idling for a couple months beforehand. I wasn't sure what it was. I thought it was something loose in the vehicle. In hindsight, I think it was that, uh, that shifter linkage there. So there were signs that it was going. Uh, this is a very common thing. I don't know if it's a common thing in the south. I think in the north it is because that salt, uh, the chlorine in the salt dries out that rubber gasket they put on in the factory. Um, and then it either just falls out or it starts to rattle. So, uh, I'll put a link to where you can get this. Um, they're hard to track down, but they're the same for like every transfer case pretty much. They they won't tell you, like this one said it was only for a 242, but I know that the 242, the 231, the 247, the 249, the 241, I don't know about the 241, but most of your common 90s Jeeps transfer cases are all going to use this same part number. So I'll put a link to that down there in the description. It's not very expensive. If you have any questions, by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. Let me know what you thought. For the love of God, if you know a right way to do this, it doesn't take 45 minutes, please tell me. Um, the only thing I could think of that would make it marginally easier is if I took out my drive shaft and I maybe got that side a little higher in the air, but uh, without a lift. I don't know that there's an easier way to do it. Anyway, as always, hope you found the video amusing, educational, maybe even a little entertaining. If you did, by all means, like the video, sub to the channel. I always appreciate that. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Uh, here is the box we got from Quadratech. Okay. Packaged real nice. And here, oh my goodness, okay, Let's see? Receipt, good. There we go, that's good for starting the fire. Here's the part. Yeah. Seems like there was a more efficient way to send this thing, no? Maybe I'm wrong. That little guy right there. What do I know?